I find this particularly frustrating because I'm a bit more of a cinematographer that just wants to go out and capture movie-like shots, recreate movie scenes, make it feel like a movie. So not having someone to help, I feel is extremely limiting. But if we're able to frame shots in a certain way, we can make it feel like a movie. We don't have to rely on someone to get these shots. So these tips will help you break free of this constraint that is probably the most common constraint we have as filmmakers on YouTube. But when you do do it, there's something very meditative and very you're very much in the flow state when you are when you are creating, filming yourself. So I find this very painful. This this process and it's not ideal because your shots feel really underwhelming compared to what they could look like. So we're going to make up for that underwhelming feeling and frustration. So here's the five tips to creating cinematic video by yourself or with friends that don't know how to film. It's very similar. So getting people to help you out in your videos is one of the most limiting things there are. Shoot something that everyone loves to do. So, And then when you have a good idea to shoot, how you actually present that to your friends is important. So I always record movies. I can show my friends my exact vision on what I'm after. So I've got a movie shot list. So I'm in Bali where it's actually pretty easy to find people to help you shoot. I very often plan my shoots or have a different challenge and different vision. And by planning this out, it's easier to ask people to help. These shoots are very well thought out, interesting for everyone to join in and help you. Make sure you get the gear down because it can really free you up to just be in the moment when you're out shooting. So filming by yourself is already a big constraint. So we want the best gear to actually enjoy the process. The battery life, so I've got the R5C, terrible battery life, an external battery with a, a dummy battery so the camera can run. Tripod, I use Peak Design tripod. It is very good, I can't complain. This is a 50 that I usually use, but I try to shoot the 50 the most. But solo filmmaking, it can be hard to frame 50 mil, and you're definitely gonna want a flip screen. And as you get the workflow down better, it gets more and more enjoyable. But now I feel like I've got the workflow down. So the next thing is composition. So filmmakers really lack, they lack in comparison to photographers that are very good at maximizing one frame. Filmmakers, they don't quite maximize the depth and the composition you could get in your frames. So you gotta think more like a photographer when you're framing up your shots. Really maximizing it. You don't have camera movement to spice things up or the handheld feeling to make it feel more engaging. You have to maximize the depth and think more, more like a photographer. You have to really, really think about the depth to your image, how to create that and the right focal length to create that depth. And then when you're doing your compositions, you have to get a lot more creative with the angles. It really makes you think three times about your composition instead of just parallax, camera movement, rotation around the subject. And by doing this, you might actually realize how often you're overusing camera movement. So creating depth is very closely related to composition. So we use good composition to create depth in your image. So your image looks more 3D, the light is wrapping around multiple layers in your image and it creates a really pleasing image. So we use good composition to create a balanced image that has layers to it. So even if you're shooting something very simple, you wanna create depth and leading lines for example you shoot towards the corners you use negative space and you try to make your image look as 3d as possible by backlighting things i think this is one of the number one things people where people need to start and is one of the most important things there are 
If you're filming with someone who doesn't know filmmaking, a uh, gimbal is something you definitely want or you need to embrace the handheld look and understand how your video is going to be edited and sound designed to match handheld. A more raw feeling. So to make it feel like a movie, the same things apply to any filmmaking. So handheld can make it feel very personal and like you're in the shot. When I had someone helping, I'd do shots like this. And then when I only had a tripod, I did shots like this. Now there's gonna be a lot of less camera movement. I love camera movement where is three different shots combined into one shot three different angles because the camera's moving the subject's moving the environment is changing that's where you get really dynamic shots and i'm always on the lookout for that and it's very hard to achieve with um just tripod shots to get a little bit of movement is whatever is in frame is coming in out of frame revealing subjects and Another tip is to play with the depth of field where, where the subject is walking into focus. So yeah, as more of a cinematographer rather than storyteller, I have particularly found this really frustrating because you feel extremely limited. Camera movement is so important, but just making this video has made me really realize how powerful just a tripod shot is to tell a story, just like it is enough. So I quite often shoot 8K, but in MP4, so really compressed files, so you can zoom in a lot in 8K MP4. Keyframing, you can create a lot of movement. Take a look at this shot right now, and let's reset. This is the original shot. I zoomed in because it's an 8K, and because I just know these cinematography techniques, I'm able to do it in post as well. struggle with this because I'm always looking for the best single shot. I love long takes that are like three shots in one shot, but that requires camera movement. But with a tripod, lots of different cuts for coverage to complete your story. I am not the best at this. I feel, uh, I find just like a shot of putting a cup down or something very boring. And I know it will look better when it's all cut together and completes the story, but I still struggle with getting a lot of coverage. Just just making this video, putting this, these shots together, it really made me realize that tripod shots are enough to tell a story. So it's inspired me to think a bit harder about telling stories, not just be a cinematographer and, and not just chase amazing looking shots and recreating movies but so I'm a bit more inspired to tell a bit more of a story now. The tri tripod shot is powerful and sometimes we don't need this camera movement. Even though the camera movement is amazing we can tell a story just with tripod shots. I've made my movie shot list available to download so if you want to go out and shoot and recreate movie shots the way I do you can get access to my movie shot list and can take these out so you can download them and take them and use them as reference as you shoot. I have a new video color grading course if you want to color grade the way I do. Yeah, follow me on Instagram. Let me know what you want to see in the next video. I'll catch you in the next one.